Welcome to Jamie TV. Thank you very much for tuning in. Quite a few times in my videos, I've mentioned the fact that a lot of the music software that we have available for iOS is stuff that's been ported over from desktop. And there's nothing wrong with that. I get that. I understand why people will want it. But what I would like to see is more apps that are designed with iOS in mind that take full advantage of what the platform has to offer, notably the touchscreen interface. What MonoLeap does is it turns your iPad into a monophonic MIDI controller so that you can actually operate your synths and whatnot with it. So let's not piss your pants about, let's have a look at how it works. We're going to play Monoleap in portrait mode, which is quite unusual for an iOS app these days, but don't let that put you off. It really doesn't affect anything at all. There are two main screens. This is the screen where we can access all the settings that we might want to piss pants around with. And to move into play mode, I press the play button down at the bottom. Now I should just mention, I don't have any other apps open at the moment. For the moment, I am just playing Monoleap's internal synthesizer, which you can't change the sound of at all, but it does sound cool. The notes are achieved by using a combination of patterns with the left and the right hand, and there does always need to be at least one digit from each hand to achieve a note. The notes are achieved with a set of patterns that are detailed very, very clearly in the instructions, and using those patterns, you can achieve four octaves worth of notes. But just to give you a quick idea of how that works, if I use the index finger from my left hand and put that on the screen, that means we're gonna start the lowest note that this app can make, which is a C. And I'll use the index finger from my right hand to play that C. Now if I add a second finger, C sharp, third finger, D, hear the apps filter there I'll, I'll come to that in a moment and um, then I remove middle finger D sharp and then let's see now add little finger E remove third finger F now to get to F sharp I'll remove little finger and add the second finger on my left hand etc et that's not all the notes but just to give you an idea of how it works now also let me just show you this the internal synth has a filter which whilst I have my right hand touching the screen if I move the hand up and down it changes the filter cutoff and the left hand if I move my finger up and down it will change the resonance so let's just have a little play with that <laughs> The best thing to do when you first get Monoleap is to right away calibrate the app to the size of your hands. In my case, pissy pant little girl sized fingers. Simply go in settings to calibration enabled and switch that on and then we'll go down to play mode and then all you need to do is to place your fingers comfortably on the screen and the app will measure the relative distance between your fingers. As long as your fingers are round about the center of the guides you see underneath then you're good to go. Once we've done that, we can actually switch those guides off and then the visualizer will look a little cooler. Let's just go, oh, and you'll notice that when I let go, the monoleap icon reappears down at the bottom so that we can use it to go back to settings. Now we're back in settings, we can switch the calibration off and we'll also switch off those pattern guides. What I'll do now is I'll switch off the internal synth and I'll show you how to hook up to one of your own. If we go down to MIDI and click on there, we'll see that by default, Monoleap is sending out on MIDI channel one. We can change that here or we can switch it off, but 
This suits our purposes, we'll leave it as it is for now. I'll come out of Mono Leap, ignore AUM, I'm just using that to record my voice right now, pretend it's not there. Let's go to my Synths folder and open up DRC because it's my favourite synth. And let's just have a look what sound with Asteroid Miner will do us. But I just need to show you here in settings that we've got background audio enabled and we've got the MIDI channels enabled. Otherwise, this simply wouldn't work. Come out of DRC, back to Monoleap, go down to play mode, and let's just demonstrate. Over here in themes, we can choose from a selection of visualizers that make the background of the app look really, really cool whilst you're playing. If we go back to the instrument menu, you'll see here that if you're left-handed, you can switch the app around so that the leading hand will be on the left. And here we can choose from a selection of scales. So if we were to say, choose Dorian, let's make it D Dorian. Now Monoleap will only allow us to play notes from D Dorian. So if I was to go into play mode and play a note and then choose a note that isn't in that scale, then Monoleap would simply continue playing the previous note. It simply ignores you if you get it wrong. Now let's take a look at how I used Monoleap in conjunction with AUM to create those sounds from the opening sequence. Over here I've got an instance of DRC with a bass sound. And then I've got an instance of frames with this sound. And then I've got another instance of DRC with this sound. All of these sounds are then going to this filter via bus A. We'll have a look at that in a moment. But you'll see, if I show you all of my project, that Monoleap is nowhere to be seen because as of yet, Monoleap is not AUV3. But it doesn't really matter. If I just go over here, Monoleap is open outside of AUM and we'll just go over to the MIDI section here and it's putting out information on MIDI channel one. And the way that that is being received in AUM is by going here to the burger icon and setting AUM destination. And that means it will receive that MIDI information from outside of the app. And all of these synths are set the same way. So they're all receiving that same note from Monoleap and all playing at the same time. Now the really cool bit. Whilst holding down a note in Monoleap, I can use the movement of my right or left hand, up or down or left and right, to change the value of a parameter in another app. Now I could have used those up, down, left, right movements to change parameters within any of these synths, but I decided to use all four possibilities in Bliss Filter. Let's just go over to Monoleap and I'll show you what I mean. You'll see here we've got all four of these XY possibilities activated. Now all I did was I made a note of each of these CC values that those controls are going out on. You can change them here but I just decided to leave them as they were. I made a note of them and then I went back to AUM and into Bliss Filter. And then we go up here. At the top, we need to make sure we've got this set as AUM destination because we've got MIDI information here that's coming in from outside of AUM. Then I went down the list and I chose four parameters that I wanted to change by moving my hands up, down, left, right whilst holding down notes. Now all you have to do if you've never done this, let's say here I'm changing the uh, dry wet level of the filter effect by moving my left hand up and down 
whilst holding down a note. All I have to do is make sure that right here we've got MIDI channel 1 set and then down below that just set the CC value to what we've made a note of from over in Mono Leap. Something that the stupid old hippie forgot to mention earlier that I really should have said sooner but I'll mention it now while I remember before my brain goes all fuzzy again is that... no I've forgotten. Oh yeah, right, so if you're using the internal synth then you have to make sure that you don't have your alerts muted, uh, silenced in your iPad because if you do then you won't get any sound out of it. Um, now I think it would be really nice if this app was available for iPhone. It's a shame that it's not because I was looking at this earlier. This is my old iPhone 7 which is a lot smaller than my current iPhone 12 which I'm videoing with. But look, that could work, right? I could play Mono Leap on that screen. That's something I'd really, really like to see. I think that the fact that this app is not AUV3 will put some people off, but really the way this app works it didn't really need to be. It, it honestly really just doesn't matter. Because that's something that often puts me off apps, but um, it wouldn't in the case of this one. Now, thinking about this app, if you can be bothered to learn all the shapes that you need to find all the notes that you need, you can actually play your iPad as an instrument. And that is a fantastically brilliantly cool idea. And it occurred to me that if I spend a bit more time with it, and kind of worked on that, then I could take my iPad out with one of my bands and do a song on it live and that could be a really, really cool feature. But the problem with that is that um, I would need an interface and so I'd have one of these horrible proprietary, overpriced, ugly, white, shows up on everything you video, unavailable in any other colour annoying Apple dongly thing sticking out the bottom of the iPad interface attached maybe a charger lead attached as well and that weight hanging out the bottom of the iPad can sometimes cause the connection to be slightly dislodged and then you lose the sound so that's kind of a pract uh, practicality if I can remember how to speak properly a practicality to get past but in no way a criticism of the app. Um, now the app itself I think is brilliantly designed, it's nice and simple to use and it's a lot of fun to play. But I have an idea of how it could maybe be taken to another level, something I'd really like to see, not a, not a, yeah, what's the word, something to be developed, right, not corrected, developed, is, this is my idea. What I think is, when you go into the app and you choose a scale, and by the way, it could maybe do with a few more choices of scale in there. Now, I don't usually use those scale things because I, I know a lot of scales and the ones I don't know, I like to learn them. I like to learn how to play them on an instrument. That's just something that's important to me. But it occurred to me that if you could choose a scale and then every note every shape that you made with your hand played a note from the scale chosen so this would be like a new mode then you could right, because what happens at the moment is if you make a shape for a note that isn't included in that scale it just doesn't make a new sound if you're already holding down a note then that note just continues if you weren't holding down a note previously you get no sound at all uh, it would be nice if every time you touch the screen it made a sound from the scale that you've chosen because that way somebody who doesn't play an instrument or isn't hugely adept at playing an instrument or just someone who can't be bothered to learn all of those patterns that you need for the notes in this app could just play you could just jam away on it like a, a freedom of musical expression I know that sounds a bit hippy nice, but I just think that could be a really, really cool thing. Anyway, there's something that I've forgotten to do. Um, I just realised as I started to record this outro bit that there's something that I haven't actually done yet. I'll tell you what it is. I think that if I plug my iPad into my computer, 
I should be able to control a synth in my computer with my iPad. I don't know if it does that. So stay tuned to the end of this video and you'll find out at the end whether or not my idea actually worked. So ahead of that, I'll just say, if I missed anything about this app, then please comment below the video ask your questions also down below the video you can find out how you can buy my merch check out my music look at my website join my patreon and all of that good stuff so until my next video make lots of music be good people have fun be kind and don't piss your pants about and stay tuned